an FM transceiver, a mobile smartphone, and a free app that you can download. These are the three things you need to be able to send text over radio. Keep watching where I'll describe Rattlegram from the Ribbit project and give you a demonstration of what it can achieve. It's ideal that you have a cable between the phone and the transceiver, but you don't have to. You can send messages of maybe four or five lines, and it all is in one burst of about one to one to a half seconds. This is my Rattlegram test beacon I've set up at home. I wrote a test message on the mobile phone and recorded it on the computer using Audacity. It's on for about one to a half seconds and off for about 14 seconds and I've used Audacity's loop function to send it in as a loop. So every 15 seconds you get a burst of my message. This is coupled into the handheld and I'm using the Vox function on the handheld and that is connected to my external antenna. So every 15 seconds there's a beacon message and that sends out a text that I can look at on my mobile phone if I have it next to a 2 meter FM receiver. If the signal's too weak, the decoding fails. This is a successfully decoded signal. It's about the longest you could transmit, but as you can see, it's a useful amount of text. Let's have a look at the Rattlegram app itself. And it's very, very simple. Uh, main things you want to remember, if you want to compose a message, it's this, so you can compose it there. Uh, you just uh, write in your text, got a keypad, whatever. There's more protection if you have a short message than if you have a long message. I think that might be to do with the security. I don't think it's going to be much of an issue if you're transmitting it on the amateur bands. But anyway, let us just hit transmit to give you an idea of what a transmission sounds like. And that's a transmission. It's a burst of about one, one to a half seconds. It seems to be the same length no matter how long the message that you put in it was. Um, if you don't want to send that message then just hit discard. And on the right got various menus things about Rattlegram this is probably what we should have looked at first of all uh, it's co f d m t v encoded audio based on open source software so there's all the specifications for the techos out there and lots more and the disclaimer, so that's a bit about Rattlegram. Uh, we'll just close it and have a look at some other info. Um, call sign. Yeah, I thought this was pretty good. You can enter a call sign. So that's fine. 
danger zone. Not sure what that is, but let's press it. Delete message, enable ultrasonic. I wonder what that is. Maybe it allows you to send it in ultrasonic noises rather than audio. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you probably won't be using that bit very much. Night mode. Let's get out of night mode. And then we're back to where we were before. There's also here what's called parrot mode, which you can enable if you want. And I tried it before, and when I had an incoming message, it just repeated it. So you could very easily set up a parrot repeater using this software. Um, so that's something that I'd really suggest you investigate. That could be just a mobile phone, a handheld, a cable, probably not much more than that. And you'll be able to set up a repeater that can receive and forward text messages. And if you put that up on a hill, then it will be over quite a wide area. So as a way of setting up a little network where you can send text messages all over the place, that would be quite a bit of fun. Decoder settings, um, okay, sample rates. It'd be interesting looking at this to see if you can get better results under weak signal conditions. I was actually playing around with the Audacity and I could slow the transmission of this and it's still decoded even at lower speeds. So again, something else that you might want to experiment with. Audio source, okay, default, so there's various options there. Encoder settings. I won't go into all that here, but some interesting things to learn about. So that's my look at the Rattlegram app. Not much detail, but I hope it interests you. And if you want to learn more, then there's some information on the ribbitradio.org website, or there's some links that might be helpful. I'll have those in the video description. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good Antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas and More Hand Carried QRP Antennas. They're big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.